Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Glory to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Christmas season. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. Hope your Christmas was blessed. God is good. So good to uh, see another day. Praise the Lord. How you guys doing this morning? Saturday morning, right? December 26. Praise the Lord. What's up, gang? How's everybody doing? Praise the Lord. Thank God for another day. How was your Christmas? Good morning. How's everybody doing? I see all of my friends and family. How you guys doing? How was your Christmas? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. Thank God for another day. Thank God for um, just um, just being with us and giving us the strength. Amen. Wonderful time with your family. That's wonderful. All we did was um, watch uh, sports and we watched Home Alone last night. <laughs> that movie never gets old. <laughs> We watched Home Alone, and we had um, some Cornish hens, uh, rice, and broccoli. And then my wife uh, went and got us some ice cream. So we haven't had ice cream in a while, so it was really good. I had cookies and cream, and I, I, she had Snickers. Um, so we had a wonderful time yesterday, just chilling, and, and you know, you know, you know how it goes, just relaxing and uh, enjoying one another, and um, watching Christmas movies. So she's never uh, seen trading places before. My wife is a a little bit younger than I am, just a little bit, but <laughs> she's never seen trading places, and so we might watch that tonight. Um, uh, so that's that, that was fun yesterday watching Home Alone, man. Man, that movie had me cracking up still. That movie, uh, I think it's 30-something years old. Yes, I see it. Wonderful. 1984. Wonderful watch, Soul and the Wonder Woman. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, everybody was kicking back yesterday. And I've been telling the Saints, and we've been telling the Saints, to um, take this time to, you know, spend time with your family, um, refresh your spirit, uh, reflect, um, reflect and, um, you know, get recharged and get ready for the summer months because um, when it gets warmer, uh, we will start our street ministry and we, we need help. We always need help doing street ministry so if you are in philadelphia if you are part already a part of abiding the christ ministries we thank you so much for your service to the lord uh if you are a part of um 24 365 live continuous prayer and you come out we thank you so much but if you are in the philadelphia area or plan to be or can be please uh come out with us i believe starting uh may starting in may we will be going out to uh, preach the gospel uh, around the Philadelphia area. We'll go to some different locations this uh, this time around. But this is the time to um, uh, focus on your relationship with God, spend time with your family, and just reflect in this uh, season of hibernation, so to speak. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad you guys had a wonderful Christmas and spent time with your family. And, uh, you know, 
kind of take your gas foot off the gas just a little you know to um refresh and, and regenerate and can't run off of fumes man you can't you can't run off of fumes uh walking with christ some people just go 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 you gotta take some time so i'm glad you guys had a wonderful uh christmas again this is our today is the 26th so i believe we got five days left we've been praying for 40 days around the clock and our group 24 365 live continuous prayer if you're not a part of that group please request and uh we will definitely accept you as a friend and and fellow laborer and brother and sister in jesus christ yes did that as well amen sister spend time with the lord that's right that's right remember we had talked about elijah but yeah we've been doing this uh 9 12 3 6 12 p.m and a.m so you got folk getting up at 3 a.m and 6 a.m and 12 a.m to uh keep this prayer going and we've been doing it around the clock and so may the 30 may march the 31st is out march december the 31st is our last day our 40th day and so we want to um take that time to propel you into what God has called you to, to do uh, in this last day. Pray for Philadelphia. Pray for America. Pray for your homes. Uh, pray for one another. Pray for the hurting. Uh, pray for the loss. But um, that's what we've been doing. And uh, we, I think a couple of months ago, we had taught on Elijah, how he was running in ministry, running, you know, fighting against wicked Ahab and, and Jezebel and all her wicked prophets. You know, he was doing ministry, full throttle, you know, doing ministry. And he had actually collapsed under that juniper tree and told the Lord, it is enough now, take away my life. Burnt out, stressed out, right? Elijah, one of the most powerful prophets there ever has been. And so he told the Lord, take away my life is enough. But he collapsed and fell asleep. And the angel tapped him. And Elijah saw some food sitting there, a cake baking on coals. And the angel says, arise and eat. And he ate that cake and he fell asleep. And the angel tapped him again and said, arise and eat another cake. He says, uh, for the journey is too much for you. So one cake was for rest. Right, anytime you see food from heaven, that's the angel, angel food cake. Um, angel came down and cooked him some food, just like that manna came down from heaven for the Israelites. And just like Jesus Christ says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Anytime you see bread and heaven, we're talking about the word of God. So he ate the first cake and he fell asleep and got some rest. Then the angel tapped him again and said, eat this next cake. For the journey is too much for you. So the first cake was for rest. The word of God gives us rest. We need the word of God to give us rest. And then we need strength for the journey. Life's journey is too much for us. Right? So we need rest. The word of God gives our souls rest. Right? We need rest. Jesus Christ says, take my yoke upon me, learn of me. You shall find rest unto your souls. For I am meek and lowly. Right? Rest. And then he says, eat the next one for the journey. And the Bible says that he went in the strength of that meal for 40 days and 40 nights, even unto Horeb, the mountain of God. Life journey is too much for us. So always think about that with Elijah when you're ripping and running and, and you know, when you need strength. One cake was for rest and one cake was for the journey. So we, we thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm going to go into four points before we go into our prayer. Again, Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, praise the Lord for you. Thank God that you are here. Thank God for his grace, his mercy, his kindness. I, I just I just try to teach the saints to always have a forward thinking mind, you know. No matter what we go through, no matter what life throws at us, just try to keep our mind on things above. And always have a forward-thinking mind. Try it, you know, because it's, it's easy to get stuck and stagnated on old stuff and things in the past and 
this happened to me and that happened to me and this person and that, you know, that stuff bogs us down. Jesus called it the cares of this world. Choke the word. The cares of this world choke the word and we become together all unfruitful. So I want to look at, I put in the title here before we go into our prayer. I put in the title here, uh, the 9 a.m. prayer. And four principles for an effective ministry. Four principles for an effective ministry. Good morning, everybody. Those of you that are just jumping on, this is our 9 a.m. prayer. Someone will be on at 12. I believe it's Sister Weena. She'll be on at 12 in our group 24365 Live Continuous Prayer, a church without walls. And also, my name is Brother Ron. I'm the pastor of Abiding in Christ Ministries. Uh, please, please link up with us. Um, we are a street ministry and we are constantly looking for saints to come out with us to preach the gospel here in Philadelphia. And not only to preach the gospel, but to serve the community and to get to know the community and build relationships in the community. Because a lot of times preachers just want to rain down fire on people and leave. They have no, no heart for people. They have no heart to get to know people like Christ would go and sit down. Zacchaeus, come down from the tree tonight. Salvation has come to your house. You know, Jesus Christ would go to people's houses and sit with them and get to know them. You know what I mean? So we got to get that back into ministry. It ain't just, oh, I warned them. I warned them. I warned them. I did my part. I warned them. I did my part. I warned them. That's religious duty. How about having a, a heart for getting to know people and walk walking amongst people, right? And and walking with them through the fiery trials of salvation, through the ups and downs of salvation, and all that stuff that people go through uh, in salvation. So let me get let me get to this. Thank you, Sister uh, Gwen, for putting that up there. Four principles for an effective ministry. The first one is that an effective ministry is born out of personal problems. Jesus Christ helped people in their personal problems. He offered hope to the hopeless and he offered help to hurting people. Jesus offered hope to the hopeless and help to hurting people. His ministry was born out of other people's personal problems. People will say, Master, I know that you, if you speak the word, my daughter will be healed or my son will be healed. Um, Peter's mother-in-law, she had a fever. Like, there's a personal problem. The man that was taken, that was palsy and his friends tore off the roof. Right? He tore off the roof and lowered him down to Jesus. That was a personal problem that that God had. Guy had. And so we had, uh, last year we had preached the message. We preached the message on, um, on um, the four men that lowered their friend down into the house. The four men that lowered their fr friend down into the house. And we had said that we gave them names because the Bible doesn't give the four men names. And we gave the four men names. We said one was compassion, one was love, one was humility, and uh, one was, I believe, faith. Yeah, because he's seeing their faith, the Bible says. So he said, compassion, love, humility, and faith. That was the name of the four friends. That's what it takes to lower people down to Jesus Christ. Remember, they, they lowered him down. That, that's a gentle process. They didn't just, oh, here you go. We brought you to Jesus. Here, you're on your own. Right? When they took that roof off, the Bible says they lowered him down. This is a gentle process when we bring in people to Jesus. We have to lower them down. We just don't drop them. There you go. I did my part. There you go, Jesus. Give them Jesus and just walk away. It don't work like that. It does not work like that. You have to uh, bring people into salvation, plant the seed, uh, some water. God give the increase. But as we do that, we do that gently. We lower them down, the Bible says. I like that. That. Uh, those four friends, faith, humility, um, love, and I believe it's pay. I forgot that fast, but they lo they lowered him down to Jesus. So the first one, uh, the effective ministry is born out of personal problems. That's what that's what we're here for, to help people 
to lower them down to Jesus, to tear the roof off the things that are, are, are blocking them from getting to Jesus. That's what that roof, that roof represented an obstacle and the four friends, faith, love, humility, patience. Uh, they, they tore the roof off and they lowered him down to Jesus Christ. He had a personal problem and that's what we're here to help people with to lead them to Jesus Christ. It's born out of personal problems. That's what ministry is born out of because you figure when God calls you, it's a burden. You have a burden for the loss. You have a burden to see people come to Christ. And then when you run into these people, they have personal problems. They have issues. They have backgrounds. They have uh, sin. We all have sin that goes deep, deep, deep. And, and, and our roots in sin go very deep. And that's what God has called us to, to do, right? So a lot of our ministries are born out of personal problems. A, a brother or sister might call you and say, I need help doing this and I need help, you know what I mean? And you go there for them and you help them and you, and you get a chance to minister to them. So that, that ministry that, that God has called you to do, it was birthed out, birthed out of uh, personal problems. People that, that started Facebook pages and, and stuff, people probably told them, you know, pray for me. You know what I mean? Then God said, hey, won't you just pray all the time for people? You know, start a page. And so that ministry was born out of personal problems. Jesus Christ helped uh, hopeless people. He helped hurt, He helped hurting people. He didn't hurt people with his words. His ministry was not fire and fire and brimstone. He helped hurting people. That's what Jesus Christ did. He helped hurting people people and he gave hope to hopeless people and that's what we are called to do the next one is uh an effective ministry number two it is bathe in prevailing prayer right the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man or righteous woman availeth much number two it is bathe in prevailing prayer Jesus Christ told Peter the devil has desired you to have you they might sip you and wheat but I have prayed for you we have to pray for one another's callings, for one another's ministries. Uh, we can't be bitter and holding grudges and living offended. Being offended is in inevitable. I put, we put that up there. The being offended is inevitable, but living offended is a choice. And those these are the things that hinder our prayers, living offended, living on things that happened in the past. Right, so it is bathed in, in prevailing prayer. Number two, it is built upon a prior purpose. Jesus Christ, number three, I'm sorry, number three, it, it is built on a prior purpose. Jesus Christ was crucified in eternity. In eternity. Where was he crucified at? In the mind of God. He says, the Lamb of God, which was slain from the foundation of the earth. So this plan was a prior purpose. This is something that was put in place to deal with sin. Where was he slain at? In the mind of God. Right? So when, when, when Abraham was told to slay Isaac, the Hebrew writer tells us that this, this is a picture of, of God going up to Mount Moriah, the same mountain uh, range of mountains that Jesus Christ was crucified on. It is a picture of God pouring his wrath out on his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And we know that God had provided himself a ram. That's what Abraham told Isaac. And he says, I see the wood, I see the knife, you got me tied down, but where's the sacrifice? And Abraham told Isaac, he says, the Lord shall provide himself a lamb. And as he went to go slay him, and also he was going to kill him. But guess what he said? The writer of Hebrews says that Abraham received Isaac in the figure, meaning that if God said that my descendants will be in, called an Isaac, and that my lineage, would, my offspring, would be carried out through Isaac. Then he's must going. He must going to uh, raise him from the dead. That's why the Bible says the writer of Hebrews says that Abraham received Isaac in the figure, 
believing in him who raises the dead. So, you know, he said, all right, he must going to raise him from the dead if, if he's calling me to uh, sacrifice him. And number four, before we go into prayer, uh, effective ministry, it bears a private price. It bears a private price. And we all know that we all go through stuff individually. You know what I mean? We, we all go through stuff individually in our private lives. The things that God has to get out of us, the things that we go through to make us. These things are not designed to break us. They're designed to make us. Right? Effective ministry. Principles for have for an effective ministry uh, is bearing a, a, a private price. That's number four, Sister Gwen. Thank you for putting those, those points up there. It bears a private price. And we know that Jesus Christ had a, um, a prayer ministry, a prayer life, and he suffered. Hebrews tells us he suffered, right? Yes, it bears a private price. A lot of stuff that we go through privately is what God uses to strengthen us for our public ministries, right? A lot of times people just see the ministry, they see the preaching, they see the works, they see the results, but they don't see the private price that people pay for being called to ministry amen i love you guys let's pray father we thank you so much for your grace your mercy and your patience lord we thank you so much for the spirit of jesus christ lord that lives in us lord father help us lord to grow let us have depth in our heart for the word of god Father, help us, Lord, to um, open our minds, our spirits. Let us have a forward-thinking mind. Let us constantly evolve as Christians in you, Lord. Let us not be like the children of Israel going around the same mountain for 40 years, Lord, because of their stubbornness and because of their stiff neck and because of their lack of faith and because of their hardness of heart Lord let us not go around the same mountain over and over again Lord let us not be stagnant Lord in our walk with you Lord let us not be stagnant in our relationships let us not be stagnant in what you called us to do Lord Father we pray for those that are hurting we pray Lord for those that are in need Lord Father help us Lord to not just love in word but also indeed also father i pray for um, my brothers and sisters in christ lord i pray for their family members their children their spouses their parents their siblings i pray for them on their jobs lord their houses and school lord we pray for the younger christians lord that they would uh, grow in you lord that they they would know the difference lord between uh, preachers that actually love you and love them in contrast to preachers that just want to condemn and want to rain down fire on them, Lord. Let them not walk in fear of man, but let them walk in the fear and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you so much for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We confess our sins we confess our flaws we confess our faults we confess our shortcomings you remember our frame lord that we are but dirt lord we thank you so much lord for having mercy on us for having pity on us you said blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy lord if it had not been for you lord being gracious and kind and forgiving and tender towards us, Lord, we would all be consumed, Lord, by your holy wrath, Lord. But because you're so merciful and gracious, you poured all of your holy wrath on Jesus Christ. And you have made him to be sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. His righteousness for our filthiness, his holiness for all of our impurities. And we thank you for that great exchange, Lord. 
and we accept that by faith in you, Lord. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up, Lord. There is none as holy, as righteous, as pure, as perfect as you are, God. Nothing in this universe, this earth, in heaven, above heaven, under heaven, beneath heaven, beside, nothing compares to you, God. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the blood of the covenant. Thank you for saving our souls, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, I lift up all my family and friends that are with me in prayer, Lord. I pray that you meet their needs. I pray that you transform their hearts and their minds. I pray that they, they would spend time in your word, Lord, and they, they would not neglect so great a salvation, Lord. They would not neglect spending time with you, Lord. Father, give us that hunger and that thirst after righteousness, Lord. Father, we cast all of our cares on you, Lord. We cast our confusion, our fears, our doubts, our worries, our anxieties, Lord. We intercede for those that are struggling in their minds, Lord, struggling in their spirits, struggling in their health, Lord, struggling in their uh, finances, Lord. We pray for them, Lord. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, thank you for being with us. You are very present help in a time of trouble. Your name is Jehovah Shammah, which is to say the Lord is there. And we thank you for being with us through it all, Lord. You will never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for your time thank you so much for your prayers again uh sister ween i believe will be up on at 12 in our um 40 days of praying around the clock and then someone will be on at three then six and then nine then 12 and so forth and then uh we're done uh, december 31st i believe so we are done then. So God bless you guys. Thanks. I hope you have a wonderful, productive day. Again, always have a forward thinking mind, regardless of what the enemy throws at us, regardless of what comes our way. Uh, deal with it and the strength and the grace of God. You know, it, it hurts. It's painful. But ask God to give you a mind that's uh, focused on things above and a mind that even though we go through trials and tribulations and, and we have setbacks, but Ask God to give you a forward thinking mind, meaning to constantly look forward and move forward. I love you guys. Uh, have a blessed day. Yes, Jehovah Shama, the Lord is thither. <laughs> Sister Gwen, don't start nothing now. Have me start preaching up in here. <laughs> Jehovah Shama, the Lord is thither. Amen. That's right. He's there wherever we go. In fact, he's there before we even get there. Amen. God bless you guys. You have a wonderful day. We love you. Jesus Christ is Lord. Merry Christmas.